Greetings from Deal. Uh, hello from uh, West Freeport. Uh, just wanted to uh, cover poison making video number seven. Okay, so what we're going to cover in this video, we're going to cover the trade skill modifier um, as we progress through the uh, uh, Prophecy of Roe expansion. Okay, uh, Prophecy of Roe was actually a very good expansion for trade skillers. Um, Probably wasn't the strongest expansion, uh, this putting it mildly, uh, for uh, raid content, but for people that enjoy trade skilling, man, this is one of the best. And uh, we're going to talk about our trophy quests, and trophy quests are given from these two um, quest givers in West Freeport. When you go into your window here, the gate is right here to the south, you exit the gate, turn right, and there's two quest givers. There's event coordinator Bobble Diggs. She gives the initial quest. And then we have Judge Marion. Okay, and Judge Marion is the person that you give your hand ends to. Okay, and what we do is we go over to event coordinator Bobble Diggs. And just uh, before I go over that, I just want to just let you know that when we take on the, uh, the uh, Master Toxicologist quest, that's what this one is. Um, you can do this for any trade skill, uh, but this ultimately will get us, uh, the ultimate goal here is to get the uh, the best poison making modifier in the game or the best skill modifier in the game. Uh, you can do this for other trade skills. I did this for brewing. Here's the Brewmaster's mug. Here's the Den Mother's rolling pin. Um, these are items that give you the best uh, skill modifier that you can get. The Peerless Pestle is the one that's, uh, rogues, that rogues are awarded. And so what you do is you go over here to Bobble Diggs, hail her, uh, let's go into her, uh, and then just say the word test, okay? Uh, so you, at this point in the game, you no longer have to type uh, the uh, uh, dialogue. You just, uh, there's these hot buttons. And so what you're gonna do is you're gonna say this word poison to her, okay? And then you're gonna accept the quest from Bobble Diggs. And what Bobble Diggs is going to do is she's going to give you a laundry list of 10 poisons to make, actually nine poisons to make. You have to remake the Grandmaster Assassin file, which I already made in uh, poison making uh, video numbers three and four. I already made that. I, I discussed making that. So you're going to want to make a Grandmaster Assassin vial. And then you're going to want to travel the world and collect ingredients as we've done in the last couple videos. Um, and uh, collect uh, this laundry list that event coordinator Bobble Diggs has given you. And you're going to hand each of those, including, including the Grandmaster Assassin uh, vial, to a Judge Marion. Okay. Uh, you don't want to start doing these hand ins and you don't want to st start doing these collections until you've accepted the quest. So that's a key part of this uh, walkthrough is you want to accept the quest first. Then start traveling the world, collecting ingredients, and start start with your combines. Okay, uh, let's see here. Uh, once you've handed all the uh, laundry list to uh, Judge Marion, she's going to give you a scorecard. Okay. Then what you do with that scorecard is you give that scorecard back to Event Coordinator Bobble Diggs. And then she will give you an unmodified trophy and a certificate, okay? What you do is you take the unmodified trophy and you put it in your right hand, your main hand, okay? Uh, sorry, South Paws, but you put it in either your left or your right hand, okay? Then you open the appropriate trade skill container. With poison making, it's going to be your mortar and pestle, okay? You're going to open up your mortar and pestle and you're going to open up the experiment tab and put their certificate in the experiment tab. And I can bring that up here. Uh, let's clear out some of this inventory here. You're gonna take that certificate, you're gonna put it in the experiment tab and you're gonna hit combine. Let me get rid of my fishing pole. All right, so let's just kind of show you. You open up your mortar and pestle, hit experiment. You pretend like this piece of paper is the certificate, hit combine. And when you do that, the trophy then evolves, okay? Now, um, this opened up, uh, well, actually, the concept of an evolving item or an item that gains experience uh, is was not new to this expansion, but this expansion really, really emphasizes it. So when, you, when your skill is at max level, 
you're doing the Grand Master Toxicologist quest. After you've done this initial evolve by putting the certificate into your uh, make poison or you're uh, putting the certificate into your mortar and hitting combine, then your trophy evolves to a level six of seven. Okay, so here's the peerless pestle. And if you look over here, it says evolving level seven out of seven. That means that this is the trophy that's a fully evolved trophy. When you finish the uh, Grand Master uh, Toxicologist quest, um, and you finish with the evolved uh, evolution of that item, it only evolves to six of seven. So that means that you have a master trophy. That master trophy has a 12% skill modifier, still much better than you'd ever get with the Assa Grandmaster Assassin seal. Okay, but it still has one more level to evolve. And what that means is you have to do uh, a great number of non-trivial combines with the Peerless Pestle equipped and that's either equipped in your range, your primary or secondary slot, you need to do a whole bunch of non-trivial combines in order to get the trophy to evolve. And the trophy will gain experience, a lot like you gaining experience on your um, experience bar or your AA bar. Um, so if you do the quest earlier uh, than a, a skill level of 300, you'll get a lesser trophy, uh, and that lesser trophy will evolve uh, alongside your skill level getting higher uh, but I'd recommend uh, getting to max uh, poison making first and getting the highest trophy that you can um, collecting a, by the by this point you should have had uh, many ingredients in your bank collected from several previous expansions so it's pretty easy to get this uh, trophy to evolve might require a little farming but nothing that wouldn't take over a week um, so I'm just going to go over uh, some of the key poisons. A lot of these poisons are poisons we've already seen before. Um, for example, Warlord's Rage, uh, that drops, uh, uh, we get Succulent Sap, that drops in the over there outpost. Uh, and then um, Soul Burn, you need Scorpicus Venom, and that's, uh, those drop over by Howling Stones, also in the over there outpost. Uh, but another one, um, first place I'm going to go to, is the Gulf of Gunfack. And you actually need to go fishing. Uh, you need to get ovate jellyfish, and this gets you a poison. The ovate jelly, jellyfish are you be used to make a poison called nematocyst poison, and nematocyst is a direct damage, and it's also a, a poison that you can stack. It has a number in the lower left-hand corner, so you can actually use nematocyst. Um, you can actually use nematocyst. Uh, to make a multi-dosed nematocyst poison. Um, and so the cool thing is it'll appear as a buff on your buff bar and it will proc as opposed to soul burn, which is an applied poison and only procs one time. Nematocyst procs, it's a direct damage that procs, um, you know, uh, for 15 minutes. So it's a, a much more valuable um, direct damage. So anyways, I'm going to go over that list uh, right now. And uh, I'll be right back. So here you can see um, Annulus and Deal um, fishing for ovate jellyfish in the Gulf of Gunfack. Um, the reason I brought Annulus is just to increase the chances that I get jellyfish. <laughs> uh, so anyways, um, uh, the more jellyfish you have, the more nematocyst poison you can make. Nematocyst is one of the uh, poisons you need for uh, the... Uh, the Master Toxicologist quest. Okay, so here I am in um, Kithakor, good old Kithakor. And what I'm looking for are zombies. Um, I'm looking for shriveled flesh. Um, so this is where probably uh, Annulus would be... Uh, ideal, but um, we need two shriveled flesh. There's one. Leave that. Let's see, where are we here? And I've been I've been hunting. Um, some of the zones uh, that we've already been, there's a shriveled flesh there. We need two of those. Uh, some of the zones we've ever already, uh, already been, uh, including uh, the over there outpost, I got succulent sap, I got some scorpicus venom, got the ovate jellyfish, I got the no hope moss out of the swamp of no hope. So anyways, uh, we're just looking for um, 
uh, zombies looking for shriveled fresh and, uh, flesh and kithicore. And um, here's another risen commander. I saw me. Okay, there's a second um, withered flesh. All right, so we're gonna leave. Um, we're gonna leave Kithakor and we're gonna head to the gorge of King Zorb. And uh, so that's gonna be up through Rivervale and uh, through Misty Thicket back into the gorge. So we'll pick it up there. Okay, so this is kind of a bottleneck of this quest. You gotta find these mudites, and you're looking for mudite mud. Kind of a rare drop off of them. Let's see, did I? Loot the mud eye mud. Block of clay. Interesting. They they drop clay and they drop ore, but the mud eye mud is kind of uh, kind of rare. So you can see here uh, the minotaurs and the goblins don't really like each other. So, anyways, uh, just uh, shroud through here, find these mudites, and just keep killing them. Um, Drop the mudite mud yet? It does take a while. Uh, I think you only need one mudite mud. So, uh, and this would be for eye burn. Um, so, anyways, just keep looking for them. They path in like a circle. Um, so, just kill as many as you can. Once in a, once a, I'd probably get a couple mudite mubs uh, while you're here if you can, just in case, uh, uh, you know, just in case uh, you fail. Okay, what we're doing is uh, we're heading to Splitpaw and we're looking for um, white heliobore. These drop any of the uh, drop off any of the knolls around here. Um, now these knolls used to be um, these knolls used to be inside um, they used to be inside Splitpaw, but they were kicked out by elementals. I think the same thing that happened to. Uh, the gnolls um, uh, in Split Paw, essentially the same thing that happened to the erudites in the hole. They just basically dug too far, uh, I think, and uh, basically unlo un unlocked all the uh, the elementals that lived deep in the earth. All right, so we want uh, white heliobore. We need two of those, so just keep killing these guys until we get uh, two white heliobore. Uh, I did get the mudite mud. I just did one circuit. You might have to do two or three, uh, but um, those mudites actually drop a lot of clay and ores and stuff. So, you know, if you don't want to buy uh, materials uh, for uh, blacksmithing or uh, pottery, you know, you can certainly farm mudites if you want to do that. Probably do that at low levels. Let me just get a nice even number. There's some really silly stuff that drops here. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna head back. The next stop is going to be wait, Heliobor. Okay, we need to go to Skyfire Mountains, so it's probably best to head over there and get some putrid bile. Be right back. Uh, one of the cool things about this era is um, uh, you can go. Um, to Vishan's Peak without having to get keyed. And by killing any of the trash mobs inside Vishan's Peak, uh, you get uh, Venerable Sathir faction. So everyone in the over there outpost uh, consider me a little halfling. They like me um, because I went into Vishan's Peak and killed a lot of the trash mobs there. Um, so I actually go there and, um, so this is, Sarnak hates me, of course, uh, but I do, um, you know, uh, I did take uh, Annulus and I there and uh, kill a bunch of trash mobs. Each trash mob that you kill gives you 50 uh, Venerable Sathir faction. And I actually got enough on deal to where I got him the uh, the over there hammer or the uh, worker sledge mallet. So it is kind of, uh, I can use my bandolier and I have uh, an empty slot here. Uh, where I can bandolier over to the mallet and get a port to uh, the over there where they all like me. And uh, it's just that kind of like an oh crap moment and it gets you out of dodge. Um, I haven't played around with it at all, but I, I did just complete the quest this morning. Uh, 
Uh, so that was kind of fun. Just a nice little bonus thing you can do once Vishen's Peak unlocks. It's, I think, harder to do on a P99 server or early in the uh, TLP era. Um, so it's definitely a nice to have and as you progress through the content. Uh, so I was actually mistaken. Um, you were not supposed to go to Skyfire Mountains to get the Putrid Vial. You need to go to Lava Storm Mountains. So for some reason, I got the two confused. Anyways, uh, go to Lava Storm Mountains, uh, farm um, drakes, pretty much any drakes in the area. What I'm doing here is um, uh, just uh, farming a southern um, Lava Storm um, and uh, just need two putrid vials um, for the next um, poison in uh, the chain. And uh, yeah, so just keep running around uh, Lava Storm, kill every, every single drake that you can. Uh, the Basklicks here, they drop eggs and uh, they uh, those are pretty valuable. Those can make a lot of great baking recipes if you're interested in baking. So, uh, so what I'm doing here, I moved from Lava Storm to um, North Row, went to the Rehotep camp to farm Embalming Dusts. Uh, re embalming Dusts uh, drop off more or less the bummies uh, as well as Rehotep himself. So basically you just have to clear this camp several times in a row and uh, eventually um, they'll, uh, you'll get an embalming dust to drop. Um, this is used to make an undead uh, damage, uh, direct damage poison. So uh, it's pretty useful. The problem is you have to come out here. This is the only camp that drops embalming dust. So. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and start these uh, combines. I went over most of the locations in previous videos, some additional ones in this video, uh, locations for where these uh, components will drop, as well as vendors. There's only certain vendors in the world that sell King's Thorn, for example, and Snowcap Adamantia. So let's go ahead and make all the combines necessary for the um, Master Toxicologist trophy. So for each of these successful combines, so let's start with the first one, Warlord's Rage. So for this combine, once you click it, and uh, well, it looks like I just, uh, it looks like I failed that. Um, <laughs> uh, so let's go ahead and get some more, um, let's go ahead and get some more crystallized sulfur out of the bank. So, um, don't you love it? It's a 308 skill. I'm a 345 modified and I still failed. So, um, always get some more, um, uh, always get some more, uh, more ingredients than you need. Um, so that'd be, that's just going to be fun. So let's go ahead and go to the bank here. And that's special. So I have a 95% chance to make it and that 5% crit fail just hit me. So um, while we're at the bank, I just wanna show you the component bag. This is the Peerless component bag. This is a um, one of the quest rewards from doing uh, the Peerless Pestle as well as uh, the Peerless Carry All. So the Peerless component bag is really nice. Um, this only carries trade skill items. So this is where I have all of my poison making materials in this bag. So it's a 24 slot giant container with 100% weight reduction. So that's one of the quest rewards from doing the Master Toxicologist quest, as well as this Peerless Carry All. The Peerless Carry All is nice because this will carry any item. It's 100% weight reduction and it's a giant item bag. So this is a, a 12 slot container. This is a 24 slot container. Let's go ahead and get a couple more crystallized sulfurs here. And um, so yeah, so you get two bags, one for just your trade skill materials and one for any materials. So it's nice being able to get the bags. We'll go over the bags again in a minute. So, uh, okay, let's go ahead and try and make this Warlord's Rage again. Okay, there's Warlord's Rage. The next one is Soul Burn. Good spell. Soul Burn is here. Of 
requires Scorpicus Venom. And uh, let's go ahead and just make one of those. So there's a Soul Burn. Uh, we need Susceptible Essence. There's Susceptible Essence. Go ahead and make that. That requires No Hope Moss, Snowcap Adamantia. We've already covered this, but I'm, I'm doing it again uh, just for the sake of this video. So with each successful combine, you'll get a tick off that quest. It'll say, um, it'll say successfully completed, and then um, then it's just a matter of delivering it to um, to the quest giver. All right. So the next one we've done susceptible essence. Let's do putrid bane. easy one that requires uh, those putrid biles. That's a hundred percent combine. So there's putrid bane. Okay, the next one is eye burn. Eye burn solution. So this requires coyote tail and this uh, mud eyed mud. Coyote tail is purchased off uh, Darius. Um, uh, Darius and uh, East Freeport uh, poison making merchant. Then there's Nematocyst. Nematocyst here. Now this is an interesting poison. This required the ovate jellyfish that we had to fish out of Gulf of Gunpack. Check this out. Click that. And we actually have a poison that we can make a multi-dose. See, all of these are applied poisons, but this one is one that we can convert 10 of them in our coffin vial to make a multi-dose. So, and Pneumatocyst, I think we've covered, is a direct damage. Uh, it procs a direct damage, so we'll play with that a little bit. Okay, Pneumatocyst, the next one is Horrendous Atrophy. Here, this requires shriveled flesh. There's horrendous atrophy, and this one is a weakening poison. So this one um, is basically a, a siphon strength kind of thing. Okay, horrendous atrophy. Then we have temporal rot. Temporal rot. So this required the embalming dust, the king's thorn. We also need wood rose, so I need to buy wood rose. All right, so I'll be right back. I'm gonna head to East Freeport and buy that wood rose. Okay, here we are in East Freeport uh, arena area. There's Darius. Go ahead and purchase some wood rose. Buy just one of those. Okay, and we're looking for temporal rot. Temporal rot. Okay. Combine. All right, there's temporal rot. Liquid silver, liquid silver. Um, so this is nice. Um, this applies to direct damage against undead creatures. So this is an undead bane. Uh, the only thing that kind of stinks about it is you have to farm. Uh, there's only one undead camp that drops this embalming dust. That's the North Row Rahotep camp. So. Um, uh, but it does a 370 point direct damage versus undead. That's nice. And there's uh, vision, visionistic bane, visionistic pain, visionistic pain. Okay, I need a sealed vial again because I failed that first combine. So let's go ahead and make visionistic pain combine. Okay, there's that. Okay, and Visionistic Pain is a contact poison. Not bad. Not bad during the Classical Era. And then we need to make the Grand Master Assassin Vial. Again, I'm not going to make that, um, but we've gone over that in video 3, video uh, 4. Grand... Grand Master Assassin Vial. That requires... A sealed poison vial and the artisan seal. I went over the artisan seal in that video. So basically, these are all the poisons that need to be evade. 
and uh, we'll go back to the vendor. Okay, so here I am. So what you're going to do is, as you get each successful combine, you're going to hand the finished combine to Judge Marion Teldemer. Okay, that includes the nine poisons you've made. So the Putrid Bane, the Soul Burn, Vis Visionistic, uh, Temporal Rot, Horrendous Atrophy, Pneumocyst, Eye Burn, Warlord's Rage, and Susceptible Essence. These were all created. And then the Grand Master Assassin file, you're going to give this all to Drudge Marion. She's going to give you a scorecard. Give the scorecard to Event Coordinator, Event Coordinator Bobble Diggs. She then gives you the unmodified trophy in her certificate. Place the trophy in your primary hand, put the certificate in the appropriate trade skill container, which is a mortar and pestle. Hit combine, then your trophy evolves to a level 6 of 7 or a 12% modifier. Okay, then what you're going to want to do is, um, uh, what you're going to want to do is uh, start farming ingredients, or if you already have ingredients, great. But you want to do about a thousand to 1500. I know that's a pretty wide range, but in order to get the uh, Grand Master uh, trophy uh, or the Toxicologist trophy to evolve into the Peerless Pestle, you have to do um, at least a thousand, uh, between a thousand and 1500 non trivial combines to get it to turn into the Peerless Pestle. As we've covered before, um, the Peerless Pestle has a right clicky effect. If I right click it, it'll make um, it'll make an artisan satchel. Okay, there's the artisan satchel. This is a temporary item. It is a 12 slot, 100% uh, weight reduction giant containing item. Um, you actually turn this guy, uh, turn this into a guy in Nexus, and I'll head over there in a minute, and then he, um, he'll give you um, he'll give you an essence. You convert that essence into the appropriate trade skill container, again, uh, the uh, mortar and pestle, and that'll convert the artisan satchel into the peerless carry-all. Um, another quest reward that you get is uh, the peerless uh, trade skiller bag, that 24 uh, slot uh, um, trade skill bag. So, uh, you know, you get 36 um, 100% weight reduction, 24 of which is going to be just trade skill only, and 12 of which will be any item. So it's definitely a good thing to do this, just in terms of your inventory. A uh, couple other things uh, I want to uh, mention. Um, we do have uh, the poison making modifier uh, uh, from the Peerless Pestle, but there's also uh, items that we get in the game uh, that can increase the damage of your poison-based spells. These are um, uh, attack modifiers. Um, so here's one item that I got in um, the Secrets of Fedor expansion. And um, so this enables a uh, poison-making, not a poison-making, but a, uh, uh, a focus effect for poison-based damage. This can increase the amount of damage I do um, by 60%. Um, there's another uh, focus called, um, this is an AA ability, or actually it's a melee discipline. If you go under disciplines and you sort by level, there's something here called docent of toxicity. Uh, the earlier rank is called guide of toxicity. What this does is it imparts your knowledge of poison, uh, toxic substances to an ally so you can actually cast this as a buff onto say a necromancer or a beast lord that uses poison based spells you can also use this on yourself to further augment your poison based damage so guide of toxicity is the initial uh, skill the upgraded is called docent of toxicity and so basically what you do is you target yourself and you hit uh, guide or docent of toxicity and what that'll do um, that'll uh, further modify your poison based damage um, so you can gain a lot of uh, you can gain a lot of these um, focus effects um, uh, which can uh, which can increase the amount of damage that you do from your poison gosh there's so much to talk about 
Okay, so here I am in the Nexus. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, the uh, trade skill bags. So this is just the ancillary, uh, uh, you know, side benefit of doing these uh, trophy quests. Um, and so what you do is uh, you find this guy Jolum in uh, the Nexus. Just hail him, hail, and he says that he can make uh, new bags from trophies given by Bobble. And so. Uh, what you do is um, you summon using the Peerless Pestle here or using the Broodmaster's Mug or the Den Mother's uh, Rolling Pin or any trade skill trophy that you get. You're going to summon the Artisan Satchel. The Artisan Satchel is a temporary bag. Okay. And what you do is you just give this temporary bag to Jolum. Give it to him. And then he gives you an essence. Okay. Then what you want to do is you're going to summon another bag using your peerless pestle and open up your mortar and pestle okay uh, so you're going to open up an appropriate trade skill container you're going to take this artisan satchel a second artisan satchel that you've summoned place that in the experiment tab of the mortar and pestle along with that essence and that's going to convert this artisan satchel into the peerless carry-all which is a permanent uh, which is a permanent bag and that's right here so uh, and so you only do that once per trophy and that's again one of the side benefits of having done the trophy quest and have a trophy fully evolve you get you get to have a permanent bag um, 12 slot 100 weight percent uh, 100 percent weight reduction it carries giant items uh, another side benefit is you get a 24 slot 100% weight reduction bag that carries a giant items, but that's for trade skill ingredients only. So that's another benefit is you get a, a lot of uh, 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 inventory space. So that pretty much covers the trophy quest, uh, the trophy quest uh, quests out of uh, Prophecy of Row, the Prophecy of Row expansion. Um, I'm going to take a little bit of a break and uh, cover uh, poison makings for future expansions. As you know, there's a lot more expansions past Secrets of Fade War, and which means there's a lot more poisons to make. Um, so I'm going to do some research on those and see what kind of videos I can make for people that are interested in poison making on the live side. So anyways, a uh, little break from now. Uh, hope to see you guys again, and any feedback or concerns that you have, uh, just shoot me a tell in game or or uh, shoot me a comment. I really appreciate everything. Thanks so much, guys. Bye.